Good morning, folks. My name is Ian Levy. I'm 54 years old. I'm South African by birth, but I've lived in many different countries. And I thought this might be a good opportunity to do a review on the new 2016 Africa Twin, the Honda CRF1000L. Every year I try and do at least three weeks of off-road riding and I have for the last five years been in this fantastic place called Namibia. It's in southern Africa just to the north and to the west of South Africa and it's an off-roaders paradise. Today is unusually cold it's about 24 degrees Celsius about 76 degrees Fahrenheit and there are rain clouds, which is quite unusual because it hasn't rained here for about five years. And it's dead quiet, other than the fact that farmers live in close proximity with the African nature. I've seen quite a lot of kudu and some dakers, which is a tiny little bushbuck this morning. I've had this Honda for about a month now. And for the purists, she's not clean. She's not meant to be clean. I've done about 1,500 miles in Namibia desert driving so far, or savannah driving so far. And I'm sure the bike reflects that. A really interesting machine, I must say. My previous bike, which I still have, is the 2010 Yamaha Super Tenero 1200. Same parallel tandem twin engine, except this is a thousand cc's where the Yamaha is 1200. I've spent quite a while over the last three months getting the bike out for this particular trip, and I thought I'd just take this opportunity to post a quick video on what I have found so far the likes and the very few dislikes. I think the big thing on this bike is the fact that it's a lot lighter than the Yamaha, which is probably the reason I bought it. I'm really keen on the fact that it's a lot lighter. It's about 500 pounds before all the paraphernalia, which probably adds about another 100. Um, but it's really good. It's really, really good on this kind of roadway. And if you look at this, we're in a pass. This is classic. Namibian highways, gravel highways we call them. We've come from that pass down there and we're here at about 200 miles today to another town just up the road. I think the first thing to mention is the fact that the 19 inch front wheel is tubeless. Someone's got to be real careful on this kind of driving when you lower the pressures. I run at about 1.6 bar, which is about 24 psi, which is very little. You've got to be real careful from the stones that you don't get what we call a snake bite, which is where the tube gets two tiny little pinch marks when the tire compresses when it hits a rock. ABS is pretty good. I run with a rear off, which is an option on this bike. And I run with the, con the traction control on setting three, which is least intrusive or off completely. I like the fact that I can power out of any particular situation. There is, of course, the obligatory GoPro, which points in various different directions. The little session is actually very, very good for that. I also have the Wolfman tank bag, which is perhaps a little too tiny, but nevertheless works pretty well. My GPS is an old Oregon 450. And then I have two GoPro remotes. The screen is an MRA, which is one oddity, and that is it catches before full steering lock. Someone's got to be careful of that. 
I also added the Hepcone Becker handlebar protectors because the original Honda pops out if you fall over. So that's a very good idea. A couple of little odds and ends, anti scratch pads on the tank. Speaking of which, I was a little bit surprised that the tank is only 4.8 gallons, 4.5 gallons or something. 18.8 liters. Um, I like a range of about 200 miles, specifically out here. Or one has to have a one and a half gallon tank bag for petrol, for gasoline or petrol in the southern hemisphere, which we've had to use once on this trip. But I must say I'm pleasantly surprised. Below 60 miles an hour, which is our average speed. We are getting about 50 miles per gallon, using about four and a half, five liters per hundred kilometers, which is not bad at all, considering she's quite loaded. The Hepco and Becker hard luggage or panniers. It's very good, very sturdy, and has a very nice tool tube, which is here which fits in with it as a standard accessory extra. And there it slides out. That's my tool tube. The standard tools that come with the Honda are, to be quite honest, not much. I have the SW Motec top box which is big enough for my modular helmet which is really nice to use on these kind of trips because early in the morning I ride with the visor up just with the sunshade down until the wind gets a bit too much in my tank bag sorry in my passenger bag I have tire repair kit first aid kit a little portable little music system to give me a bit of sounds when you camp at night various nuts and bolts, some headlamps for the head, uh, for the forehead, a barbecue grill, a sleeping roll, I have a ribs stretcher in here and this makes things a little more comfortable with an old ground sheet which I leave in front of it, the tent that is. <laughs> um, I also bought the Akrapovich exhaust from Revzilla put it in my hand luggage and flew to South Africa from the States with it and I must say I'm very impressed with it it's actually a very nice sound that it produces the tires I use are Mitis E07 which will easily give me 15, 16,000 kilometers or about 10,000 miles. I had to add pivot pegs as the standard pegs are much shorter and basically not all that comfortable. A South African product called Rumbucks has made a very sturdy engine protector, upper and lower, which is one unit. And it has a built-in bash plate at the bottom, which works very well. I've added R and G from the, from the UK radiator guards, because the standard plastic radiator guards are, I think, dangerous. The front is a Mitis E10, and uh, that's about two and a half thousand kilometers so far, so about 1500 miles on that, which is not bad. This is a very interesting paw mark. I belong to a forum in South Africa called the Wild Dog Net Adventure Riding. A little uh, unconventional riding 
in as much as we prefer this kind of terrain and we try and stay away from highways with asphalt if we can. I love the silence in this part of the world. I think one of the things that I really like about this motorcycle is that it's very easy to do everything, anything with it. Putting it on the center stand, for instance, is usually a difficult procedure. Here you kick the side stand out and the center stand comes out very easily, even though it's loaded the way she is. One thing which is very important, which I do not have on the center stand, is two center stand springs. I've only got the one. The other one wasn't fitted. Um, unfortunately, I didn't know that it wasn't fitted. And I will certainly fit one as soon as possible. Two are supplied with the standard accessory kit and two should be mounted. This is day six of our three week trip for 2016. Namibia ride. There's a friend of mine about four miles down the road on an old Africa twin. We've been riding together for 40 years. And uh, I hope to do so for the next 40 years. Well, thanks for taking the time to view this. I thought it would be a nice setting to do it. The couple of raindrops, which in Namibia is gold from the sky. And uh, that's a good omen indeed. To all adventure riders, take care. Keep the wheel side down. And remember, look out for things that jump, specifically at night. Don't go anywhere on an off-road motorcycle at night. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.